boy, if you have blood pressure problems, you're going to be pretty happy you watched this video. I'm going to talk about why people have hypertension, the number one mineral deficiency behind this whole thing. 90% of all hypertension is essential hypertension. What does that mean? It means unknown cause, which is very convenient for a drug company who sells medications for blood pressure. I mean, in fact, antihypertensive medication is right at the top of the list as far as most prescribed medications in the world. First of all, look, what is hypertension? What is blood pressure? This top number, which is systolic, and the bottom number, which is diastolic. Normally, it should be 120 over 80. And what this number represents is the contraction of the heart muscle that pushes the blood throughout the whole body down to the little capillaries, where it then goes through veins and eventually ends up into the lungs where it gets reoxygenated. So the top number is the contraction of the heart, and the bottom number is the relaxation of the heart muscle. Collectively together, this systolic and diastolic is a heartbeat. And when you have high blood pressure, you're, there's some type of a resistance going on. It could be a blockage. It could be a lot of things. But the point is that when you have any type of blood pressure issue, it puts more stress on the heart. There's a lot of research in the relationship between a potassium deficiency. Personally, I think a potassium deficiency is behind a good majority of this essential hypertension. Why do I say that? Well, number one, most people are deficient in potassium. Why are they deficient? Because it's a bit hard to get potassium since the requirements are so high. Out of all the nutrients, potassium is the largest amount of nutrient that we need. We need 4,700 milligrams. And an average person does not get that much. And the other interesting thing about medicine is that the whole focus is to reduce sodium for hypertension, right? But what about enhancing potassium? They don't really talk about that. What does lowering sodium do? Well, it indirectly increases potassium. We need about half the amount of sodium to potassium. And I think these ratios are more important than the amounts. Many people are very heavy on the sodium, very low on the potassium to the point where they're like three times as much sodium to potassium. But what does potassium actually do to your blood vessels in your heart? Number one, it directly controls the tone of the vascular system which is the neurotransmitter for the autonomic nervous system, which is directly connected to a high blood pressure situation because when you're running up a hill, you have adrenaline that kicks in to raise the blood pressure. Well, potassium lowers adrenaline. Potassium helps support the layer of the inside of the artery called the endothelial layer. And potassium also helps improve insulin resistance. It makes insulin more sensitive. And what's wild is that when you go buy a potassium supplement, it usually comes like no more than 99 milligrams per tablet. How many tablets would you have to take to achieve 4,700? Now, there are electrolyte powders that have more than that. The other consideration that people have about potassium is that, oh, potassium is bad for the kidneys. That is completely false. Potassium is very, very healthy to the kidneys. It's protective of the kidneys. When you have advanced kidney disease, like a stage four, stage five, that's when potassium can be dangerous. Now, this next thing I'm going to tell you is even more interesting because if you look at the top medications for blood pressure, they all retain potassium. Interesting. Could it be that some of the positive effects of these Blood pressure lowering medications could be because of the potassium effect. Now, where do we get our potassium from? Well, you can get it from salads, but you'd have to consume at least seven to 10 cups to make a dent into this potassium requirement. And the average person only consumes like a, a cup and a half. And also these leafy greens contain magnesium too. So the combination of both potassium and magnesium will greatly help the blood pressure. There's also data that in the prehistoric uh, Paleolithic times, there's estimations that we consumed like 11,000 to 15,000 milligrams of potassium. Now, there's no way to know this for sure. It's just a good guess. But if you think about what we used to eat way back in the day, we pretty much ate whatever we could find. If we could catch an animal, we would eat it. If we couldn't catch an animal, I'm sure that we would eat vegetation or anything laying on the ground like an acorn or anything. 
But when we consume refined foods, especially refined sugar, we lose potassium. When we increase adrenaline or cortisol, we lose potassium. So I have a challenge for you. I would recommend that you start to beef up your potassium consumption through salad. Just try it for one week and see what happens to your blood pressure. If you can't seem to manage that much salad, then find a good electrolyte powder high in potassium. I think you might be pleasantly surprised of all the amazing benefits. Now, just to give you some visual on how much salad you should consume, I put that in this video right here. Check it out. 